I will be explaining how to use GeoGebra to solve some problems related to differential calculus. The first problem I'm going to speak about is a problem of computing the average rate of change. So we have a function and we want to know what is the average rate of change of this function when the variable x is changing from one number to another number. In this case, I work in a problem in which the function is the revenue, and this revenue depends on the number of items produced by a company, and the number of items is changing from 1,000 to 1,005. And we need to compute this rate of change in the revenue. So we have already solved this problem by hand. How to use GeoGebra to solve this problem in an effective way? So the first thing to do in the input area of the calculator suite of GeoGebra, you can input the function. So let's input the function rx equal 20x minus 0.005x squared. Always give a name to a function. It will be better if you use the name in the problem. In this problem is r of x, so the revenue of x. So I'm going to type r of x. So when, when I open the bracket in GeoGebra, GeoGebra closes the bracket immediately. Use the right arrow key to get outside of the bracket. And press equal, and then we say 20x. So 20x minus 0.0.005x squared. In my computer, to go to the power, I press at the same time the function shift and the circumflex function that is on the same key for number six. So I press this key, so it will be to the power and then two. And take to get outside of this exponent, you can use the right arrow key, but then press enter. Or you can press enter immediately and the function is already defined on GeoGebra. Now, GeoGebra understands that R of X is this function. If you want to compute R of 1005, the only that you need to do is substitute X by 1005. So you can use now the formula for the average rate of change. And the formula of the average rate of change is just it's good to give a name of everything in GeoGebra or in any software. I'm going to call it average or A or whatever name you want to put to this and press equal and define. Try the formula. It will be R of 1005. So the function evaluated in the last value minus the function evaluated in the first value that the variable takes. Because all this expression is over the one at the bottom, you should type it in brackets. So you can open bracket and then R of 1005. Obviously, anytime I open the bracket, GeoGebra close the bracket immediately. So if I want to go out of a bracket, press the right arrow key. So you type now minus again R of 1000. Notice that GeoGebra is immediately computing what you are doing. So, so far, GeoGebra have computing this subtraction, but you want to compute everything immediately, yes. So now I am inside of two brackets. Any time to go out of a bracket, press the right arrow key that you see here in my computer, it looks like this. So it will be, so pressing twice the right arrow key. So you are going to know, you are going to be outside of this bracket and then press the key is last that in my computer it looks like this one. So it's the same key for the question mark. So I'm gonna press this slash and immediately George will understand that the whole expression that was in the bracket is, is over the thing I'm going to type. So obviously you can type five because I do know that 1005 minus 1000 but in case that you don't know, you can type everything 1005 minus 1000. GeoGebra has already computed the answer that we have at the top, but now GeoGebra is going to make the division. Press enter. So that gave me 9.975. That was the same answer that I got when I was working by hand.
You can also use GeoGebra to solve some problems in which you need to compute the derivative of a function. In this case, we have a problem in which we have a function of cost that is in function of the number of thousand of bags of items produced by a company and we want to compute the marginal cost function and the marginal of a function you know that is the derivative of the function in this case is the marginal cost so it will be the derivative of the cost function and also we need to evaluate this marginal cost when we are producing 1,000 bags. What to do in GeoGebra? We have solved these problems by hand at this side, but what happened if we wanted to solve it using GeoGebra? Okay, the first thing to do in the input area of the calculator suite of GeoGebra, type the function. The function is called the cost, just C, C of X. So C of X will be equal to 1,600, so I'm going to type 1600 plus the square root and then the square root I can type as QRT and open bracket so immediately the GeoGebra understand that I'm going to type the square root of something so GeoGebra convert this command as QRT in this symbol the symbol for the square root and then type everything that you are going to type now will be inside the root so it will be 16 at x squared. Remember, any time to type an exponent, you use shift and the circumflex function at the same time, and then press a square. To get out of this exponent, use the right arrow key, and then minus x plus 128, plus 128. If you want to get outside of the square root, you can type again the right arrow key. You can press now enter by the way, you don't need to do it in this case because there are no more things in this function. So just review that you type it well and press enter. So now you have the cost function. If you want to know what is the derivative of this function, so actually what is the marginal cost, just type C prime of X. So you use the same key of the apostrophe in English. So you type C and then the apostrophe C prime of X. Immediately as soon as you press prime, GeoGebra start computing the derivative using the rules of the derivative. I'm going to type the X and press enter. So GeoGebra compute the derivative and they get the same answer that we get just working by hand. You will notice also, and I'm not showing this in this video, but you are going to be seeing in your computer that GeoGebra is also making the graph of the function. So beside the calculator input part of GeoGebra, you are going to see the graph of the function that you have. In this case, we have two functions. We have the cos of x, c of x, and we have the, the prime of c, or derivative of c, the derivative of the cos function, that is the function marginal cost. So this is what you need to do to compute the derivative of a function in GeoGebra. There is another command that is the command derivative. So you can also type the derivative with capital D of C of X and GeoGebra will give you the derivative of a function. But I think this is the easiest way We're using the prime symbol or the apostrophe in English symbol for C. Okay, so this is the way that you compute the derivative, and if you want to know to answer this question B, in this problem, the value of x is in thousand, so the value is thousand bucks. For example, when I say one thousand bucks, I refer to number one, so x will be number one. Or here, when uh, we have 20,000 bucks, it means that x will be equal 20. So I'm going to compute the Cost, if I want to know how, what will be the marginal cost when producing 20,000 bags, the value of x in this function will be 20. So it will be then c prime of 20. And that gives me the 3.90 that I have here. Enter. And if I want to solve the problem, what is the marginal cost when producing 1,000 bags? So it means when x equals 1. So it will be then 
C prime of one. So I'm gonna see C prime one. So in this case it will be 1.29. That will be the marginal cost. So they will be the change in the cost when we are producing 1,000 bags. Okay, so that finished the explanation on how to use, how to compute the derivative and how to compute the derivative in one special point. Let's finish this video explaining what happened if we have a function that is not explicitly defined. What happened if we need to use implicit differentiation? What to do in algebra? If you have a problem in which the variable y is not isolated, is not explicitly defined in the equation that defines the function, like in this case, you will need to use implicit differentiation. So y, for example, in this case, is not isolated in one part of the equation. No, there is a y here, there is even another y here. So it's not going to be easy to isolate or to solve this equation for y. So for computing y prime, for computing the derivative, you will need to use implicit differentiation. I already did it in a, another video, and I told you what to do to compute this derivative if you are working by hand. And today what I'm going to do is to explain how to solve this problem using GeoGebra. So if you have GeoGebra, just type the command for implicit derivative or implicit differentiation. So type implicit, a capital I. As soon as you start typing it, GeoGebra tell you what is what are the commands that start with implicit. So and I'm going to type this is the implicit derivative. So it will type in implicit in case you don't remember. It will be implicit, the I is with a capital I and now capital D derivative and you are going to type in bracket the function so open bracket your algebra immediately close the bracket for you and now you are going to type the function exactly as it is but moving everything so make this equals zero so you are going to move at one side of the equation all the term that appears in the equation for example you can try to type everything to the left side of the equation. So if that is the case, you're going to type here two, so I'm going to type two e, and then to the power, so again, the shift and the circumflex key at the same time, to the power two x plus one, two x plus one. So far, GeoGebra doesn't understand anything. There is only one variable x, so you will need to speak about two variables at least to be speaking about implicit derivative and then get out of this exponent so using the right arrow key as I explained before and then plus 3y plus 3y GeoGebra start understanding the situation you are going to compute an implicit differentiation but we haven't finished you need to type the other side but because you are going to move in everything to the left side, this thing that appears at the right side of the equation will be writing negative. So we'll have minus e to the power y, so e to the y, and so I go to the exponent again, I go out of the exponent with the right arrow key, and then plus, oh, minus, because this term is going to be negative again, minus 7x squared. If you have finished this, you have already computed the derivative of y with respect to x. I'm going to press enter. And you have here the answer. That it was the same answer that I obtained here. Negative 14x plus 4e to x plus 1 over e to the y minus 3. So this is just the result obtained in GeoGebra. And this is another thing that you can do in GeoGebra, implicit derivative, using the implicit derivative command of GeoGebra. Okay, so I think I have finished to explain everything that I was going to explain today, how to compute the average rate of change, how to compute the derivative and evaluate the derivative in one point, 
And finally, how to compute the derivative if you need to use the technique of implicit differentiation of the implicit derivative. I hope you have found this useful. And if you think it's useful, don't forget to like and to subscribe to the channel or make any comments. Thank you.